thanks very much for joining me today. Uh, today I'm going to tie a buzzer that I stuck up on Facebook uh, a few weeks back. Um, it seemed very popular and a lot of guys have asked me to um, show how it's tied. So here we go. In the vice is a Hanak 310 barbless hook. It's a size, size 10 and it's a heavy wired hook. The thread I'm going to be using today is the UTC wax thread. It's 140 denier and as you can see it's olive. First thing I'm going to do is get a little bit of wax onto my thread just to get me started. I'm going to start in behind the eye, millimetre or so back and I'm going to use my waist end just to guide me down the shank of the hook. When I get to the bottom here I've come quite round the Quite far round the bend here, as you can notice. I'm just going to remove my waist. And I'm going to catch in my magic quill. Now you can use strip peacock herald for this if you don't happen to have any magic quills. It's just as effective. I've tied up a couple with the, the peacock herald and I like them too. But I'm going to use the magic quills today because that's the what I was using for the, the one in the photograph. So, the magic quill is, uh, if you follow my videos, I've used it in the past. It ha it's slightly adhesive on one side. And I've got that adhesive side towards me as I catch it in here. And I'm just going to work my way back up the shank of the hook. All the way to the top. Now the key to this fly looking the way it does, it's all about building the taper. So I'm not going to apologise for the time it's going to take uh, because I want it to be right. So I want to build a good taper and this thread, the UTC, it, it's perfect for this kind of work. Uh, um, it's nice and thick. If you spin it, if you spin it the right way, it flattens out for you lovely and it makes it easy to build a good taper. So bear with me. And there we go. I'm fairly happy with that. That's a decent taper. So I'm going to bring my hook, uh, sorry, I'm going to bring my thread all the way down to the eye of the hook now. And next, I'm going to bring my magic quill around and build that up the fly. Now, if you can keep your spacing relatively even, it just helps the look of the fly. Not essential, but it, it, you know, as I say, if you want it to look nice, it always pays to keep a decent spacing. And that's the same for uh, the strip peacock herald. If you decide to give this a go with strip peacock herald, try and keep the spacing uh, nice and even. Makes a big difference to the finish. So I'm going to bring that up and into the thorax area, and then I can bring my thread, sorry I brought it to the eye there, I need to bring it back to here, round to capture it in. Now the beauty of the magic herald, uh, sorry the magic quill obviously, is because it's slightly adhesive, if it slips out your fingers it doesn't spring back on you like uh, herald can sometimes. So let me just open my vice up and have a look at what you're looking at. Yeah that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm fairly pleased with that. So I'm now going to just tidy it up at the front here a bit. And next, I'm going to add in a little bit of glitz. It's uh, This is the Vivas Pearl. It's P01 and it's the medium. I've already got a small piece from an earlier adventure in my fingers and I'm going to tie that in. So before I do that, a little bit of wax just to help grip it. I'm 
try and make sure when you're tying this in it's coming right off the back because because if you don't do that what tends to happen if you've not got it see how it's coming right off the back here if it's at an angle when you come to finish the fly it ends up being quite squinty which uh, I don't want so uh, I've got that in place now and all I'm going to do is take a little bit of time to build my rugby ball thorax so you want it just a little bit of time to build the thorax area remember you don't have to hurry this nobody's holding a gun to your head it's fly time you can take as long as you like so I've got that in place and I'm fairly happy with that. So next, um, the fly, I have played with lots of different uh, cheeks. I've tried resins with it. I've tried um, the goose biots and what I've settled on and what gives the nicest effect is the, the jungle cock feather, a natural jungle cock feather. Now, it doesn't even have to be good quality. This one, as you can see, is already split three ways to Sunday. But all I want is the tiny slithers off each edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the tips, the tip of the feather here. I don't know if you, how well you can see. And I'm just going to tilt it back. And I'm going to remove all this waste. Because it's just stuff that you don't want being trapped into your fly when you finish. So I've stripped it back. And I'm going to have a look and see what split I've got with this feather. It's from a very old cape. And uh, yeah, so I've got three splits and it looks pretty good. So I'm going to encourage that with my fingers. And the bit in the middle, I'm simply going to pull through and discard. So I've ripped that through. Now this is fiddly. I, I, I know it might have looked simple there, but that went particularly well. It's not, it, it generally doesn't go as easy as that. But what I've got now is a split jungle cock feather. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these at the same time. By putting them over the top. So my, my finger now is just touching the eye of the hook. And what I'm going to do with my thumb and forefinger on my left hand. Is bend and hold them into place. Now I want them to come up the side of the fly if I can. So I've caught that in and I've now brought my thread over three wraps I've done there to hold it into place. Now next I'm going to bring my thorax cover over and trap that in. And that will only need one or two turns of thread like so and I'm going to use a scalpel to take this away now perfect now you can use a razor blade but I've got a scalpel handy there and it's probably a lot safer so now I've got that in place I'm going to br bring Keeping hold of my thread under tension, I'm going to bring back the waist of my jungle cock and capture that in place. Now, if you've built up a decent head, this should, and this is where it could all go wrong, so stand by, just pull away for you, like so. And uh, trust me, the amount of times I've done that and I've been left with raggedy ends and I've had to go in with the razor blade to trim is um, much more than how it's just worked out nicely there for the video. Um, next, as ever, I'm going to just add a tiny bit of UV resin to my thread. can just bring that round capture it in place 
and before I do anything else I'm going to cure it off and all this is is a guarantee really that when I cut my thread it's not going to spring back on me so I'll come in with my snips and take that away okay so if I open my vise up and have a look at what you're looking at you can see that the jungle cock cheeks are sitting nice and flush on both sides now I'm not going to lock my vise off because next what we've got to do is add the tiniest bit of UV resin to the other side of the jungle cock cheek so I've got my brush here and I'm just going to come in with a small amount of resin I'll put that back in don't be tempted to put the resin on at the same time it will just give you a world of hurt trust me I know so I've got that in place I'm going to push it down now and it only takes a tiny second just to hold them little feathers in place so that's your side it's looking okay then my side I'll do the same don't want too much resin on at this juncture just enough so when I zap it it's going to hold into place now I'm using my bodkin needle here just to hold that down if you use your fingers uh, you can sometimes end up um, UV resining yourself to the fly and you don't want that okay so essentially that's the fly tied and um, what comes next is the long boring task of um, finishing it with resin now some people might say I don't use resin I use varnish that's great but what you'll have is um, maybe several hours of adding a coat of varnish and I dare say the finish you get will be exceptional but I'm going to use UV resin because I know you've got homes to go to and you don't want to be sitting watching this video for the rest of your natural so I'm going to add the first layer of resin and less is more with resin I've found sometimes uh, in the past I have been very guilty of um, just adding too much resin to the flies and, and ruining them overworking I think they call it but uh, I'm going to try and be careful this time basically because I don't want to make an arse of myself in front of you all but uh, yeah if you take your time and apply lots of coats frequently you just get a better finish so before I do anything else I've caught some onto the point of the hook there which I don't want on so I'm just going to remove that with my thumb and forefinger then I can cure up the first layer of resin now I did think to um, you know finish doing this fly and speed it all up but the problem is you don't quite get what's going on so I'm, I'm forgive me if it takes a long time but I want to be sure that you understand the reasons I'm doing doing this at, at certain points so the first first coat of resin went all over the fly as you can see and what I've got is still my nice tapered body and a hint of a thorax area so the next bit of resin and I'm going to add a little bit more to my brush this time is going to go concentrate in the thorax area and the key to this really well using UV resins actually is to try and keep your vice moving if your vice is moving the resin's not sort of gathering up into a big globlet is globlet a word? Uh, yeah it's a good word if it's not it should be a word globlet you don't want globlets on your fly
that's coming on nicely. So once I'm convinced it's cured, I'm going to come on again. Only this time, I'm going to put my globlet on. I'm going to just encourage it around the whole fly again. So I've already done the hard work of building up the thorax area and now I'm just finishing up and any bits you see that you think you've not covered well now's the time. So this is the third coat of resin I've put on this. Uh, not that I don't think you can, can't can count, but just, uh, just to recap, the third coat. Uh, because, you know, half the people um, that comment on the photograph of this buzzer is, is the finish. And um, taking time with the resin is the key to that. If, you know, if you, if you rush it or, you know, you, you do it slapdash, the fly will look not so good. I was going to say something else there, but not so good will suffice. And there we go. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just an olive buzzer, but it, it looks really nice. I think it catches more fishermen than it will do fish, to be honest. And I feel a bit guilty because I, I, I kind of want the channel to be about flies that catch fish. And I'm sure this will catch fish, but would I tie up 20 or 30 of them to go into my box? No, I might do five or six, but I, I've got a buzzer pattern that I'm very confident with. And I'll share that with you next time. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now, and I'll see you next time. If you want to make them up, that's how to do it.